This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. So Susan and I are going to wrap up a bit. Uh, I just wanted to say from a very practical standpoint as Vice Provost to Academic Affairs, I, I, I listened a lot today, not just for the big picture, but also to think, what are some of the things we can do now? And what are some of the take home messages that, and things uh, that we as UC campuses particularly can work on? I, I listened with tremendous interest as Meg talked about uh, the myth of the lone scientist as being a, a major impediment to science. I'll say it's not just an impediment to good science, it's an impediment to merits and promotion. Uh, because uh, as I have been pointing out to our CAP and indirectly to our FPC, our faculty personnel committees at the college level, the uh, criteria in our academic personnel manual for advancement in the professor series do not use the words independent or independence anymore. That changed years ago. If you want to see the old language, do an archaeological dig into the language for the professional researchers. That's the same, that's the old language. So I just last night, I am looking at a potentially difficult tenure case where every single negative faculty comment on this, on this individual, a woman, <laughs> was about her lack of independence. All right, so in the era of team science, team less, somewhat less, team mathematics, team engineering, we have to be better, get better at evaluating uh, and documenting individuals' contributions to jointly authored, jointly uh, written, uh, authored papers, written proposals, uh, jointly authored books, joint exhibits. We have to get better at evaluating uh, performance in a team context. And that is something, I don't think this should come from UCOP. I think this needs to come from UCAP, frankly. Uh, and the message has to get out there. Um, we also heard uh, from Todd and Kiernan, for example, we heard that one of the f f per most important issues for fit for underrepresented faculty uh, issues are that they want to be recognized for all aspects of faculty work. Well, as many of us recognize, it is relatively easy to enumerate uh, certain kinds of research scholarship uh, and creative work by faculty, it is much harder to judge the quality of contributions in teaching, mentorship, and service. And this is something, I think this is a huge issue for diversity, I think it's a huge issue for equity, um, and I think as a UC, we need to be thinking about better ways of documenting uh, these, these things. For example, I think it would be really interesting to ask committee chairs <laughs> to give us feedback on the contributions of the different faculty members. As you say, there are people who don't even show up and they still write it on their CVs or they don't really put in the time or put in the creative effort or just the plain old time. Um, teaching, uh, assessment, clearly we need to develop in that way. Mentorship, I feel that every graduate student you graduate who finishes, who gets a job in their career. This is like getting a patent, right? This is a major achievement, and it is something that you should own throughout your career, your record of producing the next generation of people who are generating knowledge or generating creative new ways of being. Uh, these are things we need to deal with that don't require climate change per se, but will affect our climates. I, I think this is, uh, for me, this is true. Um, I also want to say, I, I was also struck by Meg's comment that unhappy departments have a lot in common. 
I think this is great news. <laughs> it's great news because it means that every department really isn't a snowflake and that certain kinds of interventions, as we identify the most successful interventions, we can use them over and over again, which lends real practicality to the idea that's been raised here many times, and Susan has been discussing it, the president of the UC is discussing it, for sort of developing, for example, our own system-wide, multi-purpose theater, uh, research-based theater presentations for a variety of situations. Do you think we could keep a good troop of people employed full-time on a shared cost basis around this university? Of course we could. Absolutely, that is a huge advantage of being a, a massive system. Um, I also think another take home message was the rubber heats, hits the road in the departments. This was something that was also stressed a lot at the nationwide advance program. In fact, in some cases it was shown that departments where interventions had happened, all kinds of good things were happening, and next door, the departments, not much was happening. There was not much cross-departmental fertilization, as it turned out, and that means the interventions have to be intensive. Uh, so, and it also means huge impact on chairs. Now, we do leadership training on our campus. We do uh, new chair training, two-day training. There's not nearly enough about climate on, in that. Uh, and this is another area, get, getting chairs system-wide, getting deans and other administrator, faculty administrators system-wide uh, involved in a really high quality programming. Uh, because that programming needs to have two elements, I believe. I think they need information. I, I'm a scientist, I'm a data person. Some of you have heard me say this many times, show me the data. I really wanna hear it. On the other hand, I also think engaging emotionally and doing the self-inspection is what is so stimulated by the theater, and I think that's tremendously important. So I think there's a lot of good news coming out of the conference uh, and coming out of Susan's amazing UC advanced paid program. With that, I'll turn it over to Susan. Thank you, Mo. Um, and thank you all so much for being here. It's not really my program, it's our program. Um, I have put lots of time and effort into it, but so have my staff, uh, many of whom are uh, in the back of the room, and uh, it really has taken all of us to make this work, and we're really proud of it. Um, I kind of want to bottle today because it feels really good, and the energy, and that's part of what Jeff, I think, was talking about. We have to remember what this feels like because we're all gonna go back, you know, and tomorrow we have to deal with crap and other stuff. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this, it, this, yeah. <laughs> well, he had a lot of creative words for crap, so. <laughs> that's true, we won't go into that. Um, so, thank you all for being here. And it, it is our program. Um, the original proposal included a letter from all 10 chancellors. You know, so it was very uh, top-driven in, in that way, and you know, it's been a lot of, of bottom-up as well, so that's really important. Okay, so looking forward. Um, there are many things going on in the campuses. We've heard about many of them. System-wide, there's good recognition uh, of the issues we've been talking about today, kind of bundled up as climate and diversity. Um, it's really important that our new president is on this issue. She's been very vocal about it. You know, I love the statement that I got to read from you this morning, and uh, it's sincere. So um, it's a good moment for thinking about all of this. The fact that she put $5 million into the president's postdoctoral fellows program is a big deal. And it's part of that money that we've been directed to use to develop this uh, training. Actually, Susan. Uh, Drangely described it perfectly. The trainings that we're developing are intended for department chairs, and I think really climate will be the umbrella issue there, and that's where this theater intervention will be developed. So I hope you'll all get to be a part of that um, uh, development and um, the experiences as those um, as those are put together. Every campus is also um, being asked to consider joining um, a group called the National Center for Faculty Development and Diversity. Many of you may know about this. It's an online faculty development 
service um, um, that's uh, very highly rated. Um, memberships are not cheap, but each campus um, is of being given matching funds, again, out of the president's money to join. And it provides online training, mentoring, programming, resources, uh, particularly developed for underrepresented uh, uh, faculty, but that will be available to all faculty, all postdocs, and all graduate students. So you'll be hearing from people on your campus as the campuses join. Most of them, some of Berkeley is already a member, Davis is already a member, and other campuses probably won't be joining until the fall, but you can look for that in the future. And again, if you've got any questions about that, uh, please feel free to write me. Uh, and then uh, one other, um, uh, what's going on system-wide. Um, one of the things the president has been concerned about is uh, how she hears Proposition 209 as a dampener on what we uh, think we can and can't do on issues of diversity, and she is um, telling um, people in leadership positions that they should push the envelope on Prop 209, which is great news. Um, I don't know what difference the Supreme Court decision on Michigan will make there, but um, it's, it's a dynamic landscape, but I don't think there's any reason we shouldn't be pushing that as far as we can. So it's great to know that she's, she's behind that as well. So uh, many people have mentioned the fact that the funding for the program uh, will be gone um, in the summer, and as of today, most of it's pretty much spent. Um, uh, but we've got uh, some uh, t staff time still to finish off reports, and uh, there will be, we've got a student here, uh, I don't remember where she, ah, there she is, who's uh, been taking notes, notes and will help us produce a report about the day. Uh, we just issued, and you got it in your electronic portfolio report on the San Diego conference, which I think is a great product. Um, and it's kind of made for lay persons who are in the faculty to understand uh, what these issues are and how to do something about them. Um, but we've gotten a lot of feedback about how uh, this program has added value, and it's great to hear that. We're putting together information on that, and um, the members of the steering committee, as well as the Research Scholars Advisory Board, are actually meeting here again in May to to come up with some ideas to put in front of the president. Uh, we don't have the money, so we need to come up with uh, one, a strong uh, set of um, indicators that this has made a difference, and two, to figure out what, what a system-wide program can add to, to what you're already doing on the campuses. So on your evaluations, you were asked the final question, which was, do you have ideas about what we should do going forward? So please give us any ideas that you've got, and again, if you want to uh, talk to me, call me, write me. I'd love to hear them. So thanks to everybody for being here. Special thanks to our, our guests from uh, far away who, who made this a really special experience. I think, I mean, every, everything was great. So um, yeah, thank you. All right, and travel safely. And thanks to UC Davis, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kim and Mo, you've seen on display, they were fabulous partners, and, and the, the staff in their offices as well. So travel safely, and thank you all so much. <laughs>